This is a tutorial for Unreal Editor 2 for the original Unreal Tournament Game of the Year edition. In this video, we will cover gradual movers. In the assault map called Frigate, there is an ending scene that shows a gun turret that rotates and then fires these rockets to destroy a gate. And let's take a look at it in the game first. So first of all, let's quickly run down all of the elements that you need to produce this scene. First of all, you have the button mover, which is the button that the player presses. So this could be a button or a trigger. The trigger will then activate this dispatcher and the dispatcher has a series of events. So there's the guns, the fireballs, the two rockets, and then the doors. Here are the two movers. You will notice that the gun turret is actually in two different pieces. There is a base, and then the cannons, and in the game it looks like it's one piece but actually it's two different movers because they will rotate and these cannons will sort of shoot forward a bit and also recoil a little bit so that's why they are two independent movers but if I show you the keyframes you can see that they both rotate at the same time. And so these are not regular movers. These are called gradual movers, as I right click to show you. These are called gradual movers. So that's what we will cover specifically in this tutorial. The next thing that the dispatcher will fire off are explosion chains. So as you can see here, the tag is called fireballs. And this I've covered in a previous video, so I'll put a link in the bottom in the description. The next thing that the dispatcher will trigger are spawn points. And again, you can see it's called Rocket 1 and Rocket 2 in the tags. And these spawn points are actually triggering what we call a thing factory, and I will cover that in the next tutorial. So this is a two-part tutorial for this particular map. And the Thing Factory, as you can see here, shoots these Redeemer rockets. And uh, so these are called War Shells. Then the next thing is that the shells will fire. They will come across the map over here. And then the Dispatcher will trigger these, which is called Exploding Wall. and the doors. So there's one there's one door here and there's one door there. So these are exploding walls and I have covered a similar tutorial already called breaking glass and it's exactly the same principle. So when you come here to actor class browser, you go into effects and then exploding wall. So the tutorial that I did was called breaking glass, but as you can see, it's exactly the same behavior. It's just gonna be wall chunks instead of broken glass chunks. So in this video, I wanna focus on the gradual mover because there's a lot of cool things that you can do with that. So here I am in my famous builder room. And as you can see, I made a very crude gun, nowhere near as nice as the one in the official map and I made this one piece because I just want to show you the principle for the gradual mover but remember that if you want to replicate what you saw in Frigate you will need two separate pieces one for the base 
and one for the cannons. So they will both rotate to the, the following position, but only the cannons will move forward and back. And then I just did a nice little round base so that it explains why it's rotating. So you take this whole complicated brush and then you intersect it to make one mover, which is here. And what you do is when you come to the mover button, which is here, you right click. And instead of the regular mover, you're going to choose the gradual mover. Now, as I've already done uh, in a previous mover tutorial, I've shown you that a mover has keyframes. So if I click on this, right click on it, choose properties. Under the mover, as you can see, I've got five keyframes. Now you can do this with a basic mover. However, with a basic mover, you can only dictate one opening time and one closing time. So if you had five keyframes, it would move to each keyframe with exactly the same time. So the advantage of the gradual mover is when you click on gradual properties, you will now be able to choose different opening times for each of the keyframes. So in this particular case, the first opening time is two seconds. That's how long it's going to take for this to rotate approximately 45 degrees. I set that to two seconds. And then I gave it a quick time just to move forward a bit, and then a little quick time to move backwards a bit. And then the rest of the keyframes you're not concerned about, and I will show you why. So the advantage here with the gradual mover is that you can set different opening times for each keyframe, so you can be very precise, uh, depending, of course, what you're trying to build. And you can do the same thing for close times. You can make all of these different amounts as well. Now, the reason why I didn't bother with these close times is because I will never get to the last keyframe. I only wanted to just rotate and fire off the warhead launchers and then stop there. Now, the other added bonus to a gradual mover instead of a basic mover is that you can now set a different tag for each step along the way, for each of the keyframes. So here, rotate is going to be the tag for the first movement, which is the rotation. Forward is going to be for the second one. Back is for the third one. And then rotate again, or whatever you want to do. You can set all these as different tags. And what that means is this mover will not move until it gets triggered by the appropriate tag. So if you only have one tag that's called rotate, it's going to just do the first piece and we'll never get to those other ones. If you have an event that calls forward, then it'll proceed to the next keyframe and so on. And if you never hit the last keyframe, which is this one, the fifth one, if you never hit it with a trigger, then it'll never go back to the closed position. It'll just stay where it's at. So you no longer need to use this event tag, which is what we usually do for most doors and for lifts you are now going to strictly use these tags here. Now, the next thing I want to show you that's important is the object. Normally, with a, with a mo mover, you would normally choose trigger open timed. But if you make that mistake, and if you use trigger open timed here instead of gradual trigger open timed, then it will just simply run through all of your keyframes, and it'll run through all of them, and then close back and return back to base zero. So it's important that if you really want to take advantage of a gradual mover, you must use gradual trigger open timed. Now you're able to control which of these movements you want to do. So in this particular case, I have my dispatcher. And I've already covered the dispatcher in a previous tutorial, so I'll just put a link in the description. I'm not going to go over it again. Here, I'm only choosing to do two pieces. I only want 
the gun to rotate 45 degrees and then move forward a little bit. And then afterwards, it's going to hit the gunfire, which is the explosion chain, and then it's going to shoot off one rocket. And so this dispatcher has a tag called turret, and that's going to be triggered by, in this case here, it's going to be just a basic trigger, and here the event is called turret, and I made it shootable. So I'm just going to shoot this trigger. So to recap, I'm going to shoot this trigger, this trigger will hit this dispatcher. This dispatcher will only cover the first two tags of this, what we call a gradual mover. And because I never hit all five tags, this will never rotate back to the original keyframe. It's always just going to stay where it is. Then the dispatcher will fire off an explosion chain and will fire off this spawn point and the spawn point will launch this thing factory and then it'll fire off one rocket and that's all that'll do so let's take a look at this in the game so here you can see this very crude gun that I made with a little circular base on the bottom and my shootable trigger is here so I'll just shoot it So I will show a list here of all the things you need to do to replicate the gun turret in AS Frigate. And in the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to specifically cover the Thing Factory and its subchild, which is also called a Creature Factory. And all the rest of them are tutorials that I've already done, so I'll put a link in the description.